and this engine is uh, well this is, is a what? model made yeah. for him it's one of the it's one of the class he designed I mean yeah. the amazing thing about Gooch is in many ways he's a forgotten man now but I would argue he's far more important to the story of the Great Western Railway than Isambard Kingdom Brunel ever was because Gooch used to walk round behind Brunel and when Brunel had made his great pronouncement and marched off it was Gooch who tied everything down in black yeah. and white and got everything sorted in a way where the job would be delivered. It was Gooch who designed the fleet of locomotives that ran the railway. It was Gooch who later on in his career brought the company back from financial ruin. Yeah. You know, he really is, he's the man. If you cut the Great Western Railway open, it's the name of Gooch that's written mm. through it. Not isn't Broad Kingdom Brunel. Yeah. But of course, Brunel's a kind of sexier figure in many ways because he lays out the track work and kind of pokes the eye of convention all the way through it. But the practical reality was when it came to building a railway and running one, yeah. it was Gooch you went for, and that's what history shows. And what I love about this is that the locomotives he designed effectively ran that railway until the end of the broad gauge era with relatively minor changes to them which is an incredible yeah. thought you know an incredible thought and it shows you what a great engineer he was and we're lucky to have this beautiful object in the collection and to, you know the kind of authentication of it a photograph of the man himself proudly showing it in his office i mean how, and you know, he, he was a amazing. young guy wasn't he oh yeah um, he was in his early he was 29 he, yeah. in that in this photo yeah 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 and, I mean, when he was first appointed to his role, he was about 20, you know. Of course, uh, Brunel knew his father, and that's how he knew what a good man the young Daniel Gooch was. And, of course, mm. they fell out personally when Gooch had to say to the board, look, I'm afraid the locomotives that the great Mr Brunel is designing are, in fact, failing at every turn. And we have a fantastic notebook in the collection, Gooch's own notebook, where he draws out the designs for his locomotives. He notes the how parts, because of course we're talking about an era before the, the, the science of technical drawing has evolved. He's having to work with people, say what I want is something like this, and these are the dimensions, and he's got to draw them a picture, and mm. then they've got to go away and work it. We're talking just before the age of the machine tool, when you could say, right, I want 10,000 parts, all like that. That really wasn't general in British industry at the time. Things were made specific. And so he was part of that made moving the world over from individual craftsman-made objects mm. to the mass production of a steam locomotive, mm. a rail, a set of points, a mechanical lever frame, so things that we kind of take for granted. But apart from the Royal Navy, of course, who were doing it with parts for their ships, wooden you know, blocks and things, but again, that's wood rather than metal. It was unknown, mm. unknown apart from, I suppose, rifles would be the only other mm. things, muskets would be mass produced. And I don't think they were mass produced in the UK, it was only the Americans who were doing that. You know, so mm. you're talking about the very verge of the industrial age as we understand it, and he's one of the people forging that world. So you know? he's the guy who actually makes it work. Yeah, so you, yeah. it's as if you've had this kind of creative period where all these yeah. ideas are flying around. Yeah. And Brunel is, is the creative genius. And then he but, goes away. But Gooch is the guy who actually makes it he, all work. He ties it down. He makes it mm. work. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I mean, it's, it's nicely expressed in a way that one of the papers I've read about him is that he de they describe how Brunel's approach would be he'd get some contractors together and he'd lay out how he wanted things to be done and then he'd go on the basis that that was a gentleman's agreement. Mm. And of course he didn't realise that these blokes, you know, might totally understand something completely different from mm. what he just said because language can confuse people. Mm. Gooch had the sense to then get it written down and mm. get everyone to totally understand what was going on. In that sense, he was very modern. Mm. He tied everyone down to a mm. set of specs. You know, you're going to have it made, it's going to look like this, it's going to have this yeah. colour, you're going to have that thickness of material. 
whereas Bruno would have said, oh, I want to play this and read it all out, and then bounced <laughs> off to his next grand design. Yeah. In a way And he was always working on an awful lot of stuff, wasn't he? Of any, course any he given was, moment. and he was a genius, and he probably assumed that the people that could, could grasp things as quickly as he could. Yeah. Gooch realised that most of these blokes couldn't do that, mm. or they would use it as an excuse to rip the company off, so he tied them down. You know, he was a very modern man in that sense. So, I guess the workforce must have been must have been very frustrating for him to start with before oh, yeah, he got people yeah, yes, able course, to do this properly. Yes, absolutely mm. right. Because of course you've got, if you think of the locomotive department, the first lots of people he's dealing with have probably come up. Most of them, it's a bit like the early days of IT, will have come up as pretty self-taught people. They will have come mm. from the world of the collieries, mm. the world of Liverpool, Manchester Railway, things like that. Where they, or Stockton and Darlington, where they effectively kind of taught themselves. Now, if mm. he's trying to impose standardised ways of doing things, it's very hard to get creative individuals or people who've got certain ways of doing you things. You don't really want creativity at that stage, no, do you? No, you want really? people who follow the rule book, and that's what he's hammering out. Mm. And really, that's how railway is the only way a railway can function. Mm. You don't want people to think about it. You want people, well, you want people to follow the rules mm. and follow the process and be aware of what they're doing while they're doing it. You don't want people to say, I think I'll do it this way today. Because if they do, you've got chaos. Yeah, exactly. And if, yeah. if railways are anything, they're about order yeah. and precision. Mm. And that's what he was hammering out. Mm. You know, if you look at the whole way of the, you know, the creation of timetables, creation of signalling systems, mm. all that, it all had to be. Or it all had to be invented, mm. all of it. A lot of it, sadly, through accidents that took place from previous mistakes, mm. you know. And that's really, he's one of the key people at the mm. centre of that, mm. inventing the modern world, if you mm. like. Mm. Mm.